chain stitch lashing. Hello everybody, welcome back. Today what I'm going to show you, this is what I've learned today, is chain stitch lashing. Now let me just read from the book exactly what it says here. Everyone has their favourite way of securing a lowered sail to a guardrail or boom, but one of the smarter methods is using a chain stitch lashing. The hitches can be as close or as far apart as you like and when it comes to hoisting the sail the lashing can be removed faster than you can say heave ho. So let me just show you and we'll go from now heave ho. Well not quite as fast but you can see here now how that lashing's coming undone and I can now remove the sail from my guardrail. And that's the whole idea of the chain stitch lashing. So now let me show you, as best I can, how to do the chain stitch lashing. Okay, so here we have it. This here is my guardrail, and onto my guardrail, I want to lash my sail, or it could be a boom, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's my guardrail, and this is what I've set up so far. Onto my guardrail, I have attached myself a nice long length of cordage, and all I've used is just a very simple slip knot here to secure it at this end. It doesn't matter what knot you use, so long as you're happy that it is a secure knot to attach to your guardrail. Right, let's put this in so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Right, so that's about middle, I think, yes. So let's now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sail onto my guardrail like so. Right, so now that I've got my sail onto the guardrail, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cordage here, so let's just move that so that you can see it, and I'm going to create a bite in my cordage and just place that bite at the top like so. So there we have it. I have a bite. So there's, there's my bite. And the next thing I'm going to do is just pass my working end underneath to the back of my cord. But not all of it. You don't need to pass all of it through. To the back. And then now, now that it's come at the back, you'll see it's gone round my finger and it's created a bite on its own. And I'm going to pass that bite, the wiggly bite, through that bite there. So just lift that up, pass it through, and that is now going to lock the first part of my sail in place. And I'm just going to pull up tightly on it so that it's all nice and tight. And there we have it. Oh, my sail's falling off. And there we have it. Just neaten that up a bit. We have now one bite passing through another bite. And here's my working end again. And the next thing I'm going to do is exactly the same again, is I'm going to create a bite. So create a bite there like so and pass that bite through the previous bite. There we go. And then just pull on that nice and tight. And now that I've done that, let's bring that a little bit more into the middle. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take the working end again, pass it underneath around the back like so, and you can see a natural bite has formed. So a natural bite has formed just there, and I'm going to pass that bite through the previous bite. And that's all I'm doing all the way along is just creating bites and passing bites through bites. And so there we have it. I have another bite at that point there. And then I take the working end again, create another bite and pass a bite through that end there like so. And you can see there now that bite has passed through that bite there and I've created another bite here. Now let's just move that along a bit. So let's just hold that there like so. So that bite's there, an empty bite. So I take my working end, I pass it around the back, like so. And now that I've passed it around the back, you can see here I've now got another bite because I haven't taken all the cordage through. And I'm going to pass that bite up through the previous bite. So you can see there now, that bite, the one from the back, is going up through that one there. And it's creating another bite at that point there. And then one, I, once again, I take a bite from this side. Whoop, I just let go by accident. Take a bite from this side and pass it up through that bite there like so. 
and you can see now here that I've got another stitch in place and you can see as we go along here we've got a nice stitch pattern appearing and then I think I'll probably get another one in here so just move my sail a bit take the working end around the back like so Whoop. around the back create a bite on this one here and pass that bite up through the previous bite like so it's so difficult to do with trying to get the filming on this it's, it's quite <laughs> I didn't realize how difficult this one was going to be and so there we have it now and all I've got to do now is just take my cordage in fact I'm very lucky because with my cordage here on my particular stanchion I can actually just make that bite bigger and then pass that bite over the stanchion and pull up tight and that's not going anywhere and I could then if I wanted to lock that down with a couple of half hitches but you can see here now that where we have created our chain stitch lashing this sail isn't going anywhere that is tight and if you pull just pull on both ends it will pull it all up tight as well so as you can see it's a fantastic way of just putting a sail onto a stanchion or a boom of some sort and to just undo it all I'm going to do is take off my locking here take off the locking and all I'm going to do is just pull on my working end and you can see as I pull my working end all my chain stitching is coming undone and eventually there you go it just falls free like so and I think what I'll do is I will show you that again on a piece of pipe the exact stitching if you couldn't follow it properly before what I will do is I'll set it up now on let's say for example this plastic pipe so you can just see the stitching and nothing else and that might make it a little bit easier for you to follow but that was the chain stitching and so if you stick with me I will do it on the plastic pipe as well so here we have my piece of pipe what I've done is I've just I've got a hole in the end of my pipe I could if I wanted to tie myself a timber hitch or something like that at this end as my starting point or some form of slip knot you need something secure as a starting point and in this particular case I'm just doing that so let's imagine that this is well we could say let's pretend this is a rolled up carpet and what what we want to do is tie up our rolled up carpet so it doesn't unroll again and so this is how we do it so I'm now getting my cordage and I'm going to form a bite just at that point there so as you can see there I have now formed a bite in my cordage I then pass my cordage underneath and then where I've passed it sorry so my, I formed a bite here my cordage is going underneath but only enough to form another bite and I'm going to pass that bite up through my first bite and then I'm just going to pull it all through till it tightens up and there we go that is my first part of the chain stitch done so I've now got a bite just at this point here I now take my working end again form another bite on this side this time because we did one on the other side last time and pass that bite up through the previous bite so there we go we've now created another bite and now that I've done that so there's my bite with nothing in it now that I've done that I take my working end around the back and by just by taking a little bit around the back I'm naturally creating a bite in the rope and I'm going to pass that bite through the previous bite like so so there we have it so there's the previous bite and you can see now I've got one two three bites there so what I'm doing now is just take another bite pick that up like so pass it through the previous bite and just pull on it tightly and once again you can make these bites as big or as small as you want the bigger they are the quicker you get to the other end but the smaller they are the closer they'll be together and the more secure your work will be in that middle bit there so now that I've done that I've got one but I've got my bite here with nothing going through it the previous bite has got the bite going through it this one so I take my work around the back and just by taking it round the back like so you can see there it's formed a bite and all I'm going to do is pass that bite 
through the previous byte, like so. And there we have it. We have another one in our arsenal there. And so there we go. One, one, two, three, four. And I'll just do one final one. Pass, just get a byte here on this side. Pass it up through the previous byte, like so. Whoop, having trouble getting my fingers through. And there we go. We've got another bite. And so if this was a carpet, for example, this just wouldn't unroll because it's been held nice and secure at this end. And so as you can see here now, we have now got ourselves a nice chain stitch, st chain stitch lashing along the length of our pipe here. And let's just do one more like so. Take it round the back. Just by taking it round the back, but not all the way, it's formed another bite and pass that bite through the previous one, like so. And then once you've got to the end of your work there, what you do is you can just bring your cordage round and tie in there, tie into that a couple of half, half hitches to lock it into place, and that will keep it secure until you want to undo it. And then when you want to undo it, just basically take your two half hitches out, and then as you can see, as I pull on the cord now, it's just gently undoing it, and there we go. We've now undone our work. And that's all I was basically doing with the chain stitch lashing. Quite a useful one to know. Useful for rolled up objects so that they remain rolled up when they're in storage or something like that. But if you want to use it for your sails to secure your sails to the guardrail or a boom, it's just an excellent way of doing it. So anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up. If you hated it, please thumbs down. But if you hated it, tell me why you hated it so at least I can try and improve it for next time. Okay, so once again, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.